Hey there, my friend. Today we're going to cover how to write a memoir for beginners. So you want to write a memoir, you have a story that's powerful and you're feeling compelled to write it down and share it with the world. If you're wondering what happens next, you came to the right place. My name is Brooke Adams Law. I'm an award-winning author and a writing coach. I have a master's degree in creative writing and I've been studying what makes good writing for more than 20 years. Subscribe now to my channel for more tips on how to write a book. You can also visit my website at www.brookeadamslaw.com. So let's dive in today with my 12-step blueprint for how to write a memoir for beginners. So step one of our blueprint is to decide on the slice of life that you want to show, right? So generally speaking, a memoir is about a slice of life, right? It's not your whole life from beginning to the present day. Um, it's so, for example, Mary Carr's memoir, The Liars Club, is stories from her childhood growing up with a mentally ill and unstable mother. Her memoir, Lit, is the story of her alcoholism and getting sober. And her memoir, Cherry, is about her teenage years and kind of her sexual coming of age. So your slice of life might be a particular period of time. So like your parenting years, or like it might be like a couple of years where something very specific happened, right? Or it might be centered on a particular theme, like grief. It might be centered on a particular relationship, right? Like a mother-daughter relationship that runs across many years, right? So even if you're telling, if you're focusing on a particular slice of life that's just a few years, that doesn't mean you can't bring in stories that have happened earlier or later, but just that like the main focus, the main slice of life is that period of time or that theme or that relationship, whatever it might be. So that is step one of our blueprint is to decide what the slice of life is that you're going to focus on. Step two in our 12 step blueprint for how to write a memoir is to decide on your purpose. So what is your purpose in writing this memoir? Is this to have an account of a particular time or, or like all of your life for yourself to keep as a record? Is it meant to be a gift for your children or grandchildren? Is it meant to be a story that you want to share with family and friends? Or are you looking to publish it for a wider audience, either self-publishing and then promoting it to a wider audience or through a traditional book deal. So deciding on your purpose is going to help you decide like when and how much professional support you might seek out. It's going to help you decide on like the end game. Like it might help you decide like how many rewrites you're willing to do, right? If it's if it's for yourself and your family, like maybe it's one rewrite. And if you're going to publish for a wider audience, you're likely going to need several rewrites. So getting clear on your purpose up front can be really helpful in determining like what's going to happen going forward. So decide on your purpose and kind of like how wide the pool is that you want to share your story with. Okay, so step three in our 12-step blueprint is to make a story list. So a story list is literally going to be a brain dump of stories that are related to the theme um, or the slice of life that you chose. So if you're writing about grief, you're going to do a brain dump of all the stories you can remember happening in your life that relate to grief, people that you've lost, people you've mourned, um, not just through death, but other things like it might also be um, like books you've read or um, experiences you've had that have illuminated how you relate to grief, right? Like all of these different pieces, you're just going to do a giant brain dump, all the stories you can think of. Um, if it's if it's a memoir that's focusing on your relationship with your mother, likewise, it's sort of like all the big life events you can remember happening, right? So just do a giant, a giant list of all the stories. Step four in our blueprint is you're going to start experimenting with a structure for the book, right? So most memoirs are structured actually more like novels, right? So they're structured with a lot of intention, not just chronological. Some are told chronologically, but it tends to be more rare. So you wanna look for ways, structures that can fit your story and also build suspense and interest for the reader. So I wanna give you a few examples of some different structures you might play with or start looking at memoirs that you've enjoyed or 
if you don't, if you're not super familiar, start reading memoirs so you can study how they are structured. So for example, um, I'm thinking of Martha Beck's memoir, Leaving the Saints. The way that that book is structured is there's a conversation she's having in present time with her father about things that happened in her childhood. And the conversation takes place over several hours. It might even, I think it's like several hours. It's like a whole afternoon. And so each chapter starts out with part of their conversation. And then she flashes back to scenes from her childhood or like her earlier life to kind of illuminate what they're talking about, right? So if they're talking about something in the present time, then she'll, she'll flash back and like show us her memory of what happened. So you could do a structure like that where you have a present day scene and you want to pick something interesting, right? Pick something that's interesting that where there's something at stake, right? So in this case, she was confronting her father about um, some really serious things that had happened um, in their relationship. So you might pick a, a story or a a thread of time in the present. It could be a couple of days. It could like, right? Like um, an event that's happening in the present that you're going to use as an anchor and then flash back to different points in the past, right? Another common structure is to begin in medias race, which is a Latin phrase that means in the middle of things. A lot of um, books start this way to kind of like suck the reader in right away. So Mary Carr's memoir, The Liar's Club, is a great example of this. It starts with a really dramatic scene um, with her mother and her other siblings, and it's very dramatic, it's really intense, and you don't find out until later what precipitated that event. Like, I think you find out later in the book, like, what happened. So there's, there's always this wondering, like, why? Like, how did that come about, right? So she she kind of leaves us guessing, which kind of pulls us forward. So could you believe, could you begin in, in the middle of things in a really dramatic place and then not explain everything, right, until later and kind of pull the reader forward in that way? So another example is that you might choose a shape for your structure. So I'm thinking of Elizabeth Gilbert's memoir, Eat, Pray, Love, which she tells us in the beginning is structured like a japa mala, which is similar to a rosary. And so the book is set up, it's in three parts, one part for each country that she visits during her year of traveling. And then within each part, within each country, uh, there's 33 short chapters. Right, which is the way apparently a japa mala is structured. It's 33 beads and then a space and then 33 beads, etc. So you might like cast around for a shape that might fit your story. Okay, so that is experimenting with structure. So step five in our blueprint is to plug the stories from your story list into the structure that you chose. And one thing I want to offer is, so all the steps in this blueprint are important and also there's a little bit of leeway in like when you do them, right? So the sequencing is not set in stone. This is a sequence that I think works for most writers. And also, if you get stuck at any point, try going backwards or forwards in the blueprint and, and figuring out like where you're getting stuck, right? So if you start plugging the stories into the structure you chose and you're feeling a little stuck, you might just like pick a story and start writing it. So don't let any of these steps get you stuck. Um, and if you need to like write forward a little bit before you decide on a structure, that's totally okay. So don't let any of these steps make you stuck. So in any case, step five is to start plugging stories from your story list into the structure that you chose, right? So if you're doing this like Japa Mala kind of structure, I would recommend choosing a different shape because that's a really no well-known one. Um, but just start plugging in your stories. And if you have gaps, you might just like leave them, just sort of like let it evolve, right? But start plugging those stories into that structure. And step six in our blueprint then is to start writing the stories on your, on your structure list, right? And I have three points about this. The first is like, just begin, <laughs> just begin. Don't build it up. Don't make a huge deal about it. Just start writing and see what comes out. I also want to encourage you to show, don't tell. That's an old writing adage. So you don't want to say like, this happened, then this happened, then this happened. Um, 
that's not interesting for the reader to read, right? So you want to show us what happened, like put us in the moment when you got that dramatic phone call that changed everything, or put us in the moment when you were just like taking a walk and you decided to leave your marriage, right? Or whatever it might be. Put us in the moment, like help us, if you were holding a video camera, like show the reader, what could you see? What could you hear? What could you smell, right? Like like check in with all of your senses. Um, show us the conversations you were having with people. They don't have to be exact because of course you're not going to remember word for word what they said, but you can give us like the gist of what happened via dialogue, which is really super engaging, right? So just start writing, show, don't tell. And I get this question all the time, which is, you know, I'm writing my own story and like other people in my life are involved. And like, how much can I really say? This is a question I get a lot. How much can I really say? So what I say to these writers is say everything the first time. So in the first draft, hold nothing back, put it all on the table say everything that you need to say. Because if you try to censor yourself in some places, your writing is going to come across as really stilted. As a narrator, you're gonna be harder to relate to, or as a character rather, you're gonna be harder to relate to. So say everything in the first draft, and then we'll circle back to, you. at a later point, you can decide, again, based on your purpose, like if there are parts that you've written that you want to hold back for yourself, or if there are parts you wanna keep private, or if there are details that you want to change to protect people's identities, right? You can decide all of that later. In the first draft, say everything. So that was step six, which is start writing. <laughs> In step seven, when you have written everything, you've written through, and again, this is gonna take time, right? So this blueprint is like a speeded up version so you can kind of see the entire process. So once you've written to the end of your structure or like you've written through all the stories that you had on your list, step seven is to read the whole thing all the way through. So what I recommend at this stage is you actually get your manuscript printed out. You can either print it if you have a home printer, if it's really long or you don't own a printer, you can get it printed at like Staples or Kinko's or the UPS store, whatever. But like get it printed out so you can hold a stack of pages. There's something very different about reading a stack of pages than looking at it on a computer. And what I recommend you do is literally take a pen and you can use like some post-its or tape flags if you want to and just start reading through and start like making notes like physically with a pen on the paper like what's working? What's not working? Where are you repeating yourself? Um, what parts are really resonating for you? And you're like, oh my gosh, this is better than I thought, right? It's always fun to have those those moments. And then what are the parts where you're like, oh my gosh, this is like really bad. <laughs> like It's like not really, it's not resonating. It's too slow or I skipped over this whole thing. And so it doesn't make sense, right? So I, when I'm doing this myself, I make notes in like a notebook next to me. I do not want you to like read three pages and then go running to your computer to start changing things, right? So I want you to have the experience of reading the whole thing all the way through, make notes as you go along um, about what's working, what's not working, that whole piece, and read to the end. <laughs> Step eight is then you're gonna go back and you're gonna take your stack of notes or your post-its or your notebook and you're gonna edit the whole thing through, right? So this might be another read through like on the computer version, right? You might be like transferring notes or like you might be rethinking scenes. You might be at this stage like rethinking the structure if it's not working. You might be saying like, oh, the whole middle is kind of dragging so I need to cut it up or speed it up or take parts out, right? Um, so you get to decide and also like, let this be like, kind of give yourself some room to make big changes here if that feels right. So do a full edit. Step nine of our blueprint is get some feedback from a couple of beta readers. So there's a lot of conversation in writing communities about where to find beta readers, how many you should have, all this stuff. For a memoir in particular, and at this stage, 
it's like your first book at this stage in the writing process, I recommend like one to two, two beta readers is ideal. Uh, I would say no more than three. I don't want this to be a situation where you have like 10 or 50 beta readers that might work for other genres or other um, people with specific goals. And also for this case, for your memoir, I would recommend one to three. Two is ideal, but one is fine. Three is the max I would recommend. So you want to be looking for people that know you and love you, that you can trust with your story, and who are not going to like crush your spirit, right? Like literally. Uh, so I had a client come to me recently who had been working on her memoir for like a year. And then a friend to her said very like caustically one day, like, why are you writing a memoir? Only celebrities get memoirs published. Like what a waste of time. And she stopped writing for a long time. And now she's picking it back up again and she's much happier writing. So I want you to choose your beta readers with care and choose people that you know you can trust with your story. Also, I want you, when you ask them if they will be your beta reader, like tell, just say like, I want you to read the whole thing and then be clear about how you want them to provide feedback. So I personally, like when I do beta readers, I have two friends who are also writers, which is a blessing and they read and we just have a conversation, right? So I ask them to read the whole manuscript and then we just talk. I don't ask them to write anything up or like look for typos. This is not something where you're looking for typos. You're looking for like big big feedback about like where are they connecting with the characters where are they like couldn't wait to read more where does it feel slow right like those kinds of questions because you can know what's working for you and also until you get feedback from other people it's hard to know what works for other people so one to three beta readers, tell them how you want your feedback. If you want like inline comments, like where they're making comments in a Google document, for example, or if you want like an email from them, or if you're going to talk on Zoom, whatever. Give them like enough time to read it and don't pester them, right? If you say like, I would love feedback in two weeks or three weeks, whatever it might be. Okay. So that's beta readers. So when they come back with feedback, you might go through and like, you know, decide how the feedback lands for you. So you don't have to take every single point of feedback. If they say something where you're like, actually like what you're suggesting doesn't really fit with my vision for the book or with my story, like feel free to discard it. And also if you're discarding every piece of feedback, like inquire into that a little bit. <laughs> like ask yourself how open you are to really taking feedback and making the book better because that is the ultimate goal, right? Step 10 in our blueprint is to get feedback from a professional editor. So if part of your purpose is to publish for a wider audience, do not skip this step. Get feedback from a professional editor at some point before you hit self-publish or before you start searching for a literary agent. Um, there is just, there's a lot, quite frankly, there's a lot of garbage self-published books out there and you don't want your book to be garbage, right? You want it to be as strong as it can possibly be. And if you decide that you want to try for a traditional book deal, there is a lot of competition and you want to make sure that you're putting forth the strongest manuscript possible. Again, this is the place where I put this step as step 10. This is a place where you actually, some people might decide they want professional help earlier, right? In terms of like a developmental editor to help them be like choosing the structure for the book, to plug those stories into the structure in a way that's really compelling and um, is gonna pull the reader forward, right? So, and some people might decide they want to write through the whole draft by themselves, get some beta reader feedback, and then work with a professional editor, right? So I put Put it there, I think this sequencing works for a lot of writers. And if you decide you want help earlier because you're really getting stuck, then get the help when you need it, right? If you would like to work with me, you can check out my website, brookeadamslaw.com. I work with memoirists all the time and love it. So when this is, when you're, if you're working with an editor, they're going to give you feedback. Um, keep in mind, like you'll do like one more round of edits when they give you their feedback back. That's actually step 11. I'm running out of fingers. So step 11 is when you get feedback from the professional editor that you work with, um, you know, 
take it seriously, do another draft, another rewrite of the memoir based on that feedback. And then step 12 in our 12 step blueprint is your book is ready either to start the production process for uh, self-publishing which I'm not covering any of that in this video, but like you'll need like a proofreader and like there's all kinds of steps to take to get to get solid for self-publishing. Or if you're ready to, if you want to go after that traditional book deal, you will start querying literary agents, which I might do a separate video about that process. So there you have it. That is your 12 step blueprint for how to write a memoir for beginners. Go ahead and hit the thumbs up button at the bottom to like the video. Remember to subscribe to my channel. I post videos regularly with tips about how to write a book and how to write a better book. <laughs> it's always so important. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.